The same dollar that made people do grotesque things to other humans. The same dollar that made one race of people feel superior to another. The same dollar that made one group of people feel like they can treat another group of people like less than human beings. The same dollar that makes people do things they never thought they would do. That same dollar is the same dollar that sets you free. I want to start off tonight's episode by saying that money and the lack of understanding of it, how it works, what it's supposed to do, how it's supposed to be leveraged, that misunderstanding can make a class of people feel powerless. And then what often happens is people can look at a temporary result in their life and act as though it's permanent. Because of that misunderstanding of money, the money is often a wicked master. And what we fail to relieve that, believe that, uh, should I rephrase that, what we fail to conceive is that Money is truly a faithful servant. But there's the dichotomy. There's the contrast. There's the gray area that's not so gray where people feel or people often fall into. You become the slave to the money. The dichotomy of it is, it's, it's, it's the lion tamer who often opens the lion's mouth and the people who watch and are looking at him like, he's crazy. Why would he do such a thing? And there's a danger that's involved with it. And you're like, yo, I would never do that. Right? It's, it's the contrast of, of navigating the safe and the dangerous. It's, it's the feeling of getting on the airplane, but feeling the turbulence that makes you say, at one point on a flight, is it safe? Like I've been on a plane before with a plane going in the air and it gets through the rocky clouds and, and I'm navigating the feelings of, is this thing about to crash or will I make it safe? There's a dichotomy between that. And it's just simply saying the, the, that small gray area between two things that are similar, but yet so far apart. We often navigate that gray area of being the slave or being the master to money. And before we can get truly on a wealth building journey, we have to initiate making peace with our financial past. Because oftentimes we grow up and we've watched our parents, we've watched our closest kin, We've watched the friends around us. We've watched their household navigate through the turbulent times of economic turmoil. We've watched them uh, uh, get whiplash because the money that they've worked so hard for, the money that they've worked so hard for has evacuated their accounts. So I want us to, to make peace with our financial past because what we've been through doesn't mean we have to stay there. What we've witnessed our parents go through doesn't mean we have to revisit that. I want you to understand that sometimes the facts don't always matter. Sometimes that truth won't set you free. It'll actually hold you captive. Sometimes that truth won't actually set you free it'll hold you captive because someone else's truth doesn't necessarily have to give birth to your reality just because you watch another person go through it doesn't mean you have to experience the same thing so the misunderstanding of money can often make a group or class of people feel powerless while that same money, that same currency 
gives another group of people power, a perceived power. I had an idea this weekend and it came to me and it was such a profound thought. It said the same dollar that was the catalyst to slavery is the same dollar that buys back your freedom. And it blew my mind when I came up with that. It blew my mind when that entered my heart. The same dollar that was the catalyst to slavery. The same dollar that made people do grotesque things to other humans. The same dollar that made one race of people feel superior to another. The same dollar that made one group of people feel like they can treat another group of people like less than human beings. The same dollar that makes people do things they never thought they would do. That same dollar is the same dollar that sets you free. That same dollar that same note, that same currency, that same dollar. So it's that dollar that we have to come, we have to find peace in our financial past in order to navigate what's ahead. Because if we don't, the residue of poverty will always haunt us. The residue of working poor will always haunt us. The residue of paycheck to paycheck will always be in the shadows. The residue of having insufficient funds will always hunt us down. The residue of, of, of not being able to, to, to eat certain things, to wear certain things, to travel certain places, the residue of that will always chastise us. So it is important, it is imperative that we make peace with our financial past. Because if we never make peace with our financial past, we can never have peace in our financial future. We can never have peace. And one of the things we're gonna talk about tonight is I came up with this idea, this pyramid called the six phases of wealth. And I can't wait to dig into that with you all later, later on because I wanna help us navigate what we've been through. I wanna help us navigate like what it looks like to attain wealth. I want us to understand that building wealth one share at a time, building wealth one trade at a time, Building well one investment property at a time. Building well one client in your business at a time. Building well one podcast show at a time. Building well one e-commerce sale at a time. Building well one stage presentation at a time. Building well one step on the corporate ladder at a time. Building wealth is not about race. It's about the information. Building wealth is about navigating, navigating a space that we've never been in, but yet we do know it exists. Building wealth is about leaving a space where you were to walk blindly to somewhere that you've never been, but you know it exists. You have that euphoric feeling, that jubilant vibration of knowing that you're going after something that's greater than you. Building wealth. It's, it's, it's about sometimes having to let your friends go so you can come back and get them. Because they've been imprisoned by the past. And don't get me wrong, y'all. On the journey, we will all have to break psychological chains. We will all have to break financial chains. We will all have to break those emotional chains. Don't get me wrong, y'all. We all going to feel the same feelings at some point in time, just on different levels, because freedom must be acquired. Freedom is the most expensive thing that you will ever spend your money on. And to all of us, it's new. To all of us, it's new. So, So it's important that we go together. 
It's important that we go as a family. It's important that we go in unison because we all going to be on different stages and together we can help one another climb the ladder instead of together keeping each other down. I'm just saying that if we don't make peace with our financial past, we can never thrive in our financial future. We will always be prisoners of that residue. We will always be financially oppressed by our thoughts, by our feelings, by our emotions, by what we say, by what we think. If we never truly make peace with our financial past, what we dream of can never come into fruition. will never come into fruition. So tonight on this episode, episode 84, I want us to take a step closer to becoming free, to become, to making peace with our financial past. I want you to write that down tonight. I will make peace with my financial past because all of us need financial therapy. All of us have to heal from financial trauma. Not just one of us, not just a couple of us, but all of us. Not just the ones from the project, but the ones who was in the so-called middle class too. Not the ones who was just dirt poor, but also the ones who lived working poor. Not just the ones who may have had holes in their shoes, but the same ones who, who didn't have holes in their shoes, but had to wear the same clothes over and over again. The poverty came in different levels. All of us got to heal. Some of our parents worked, but they lived check to check. Some of our parents didn't have no job at all. Some of our parents sold dope. Some of our parents were prostitutes. Some of our parents sold drugs. It don't matter. We all got to heal from our financial past so we can thrive in our financial future because a lot of that residue is still with us today and it shows up at different times in our life it shows up for us at Christmas when we spend more than we have when we got to spend the next three months of the next year trying to recoup what we spent for Christmas it shows up sometime for birthdays when we say as long as my child happy I'm all right it shows up sometimes when we got to put food on the table and we do things that we don't tell everybody that we did and we act like it's all good it shows up when I'm in a bind Nate it shows up in different times where we can't speak about it just show up sometimes and we don't always want to talk about it but we got to heal from my our financial past in order to thrive in our financial future how can we even establish generational wealth if we still carrying around financial generational scars how can we even talk about generational freedom if we th if we walking around holding the chains and holding the baggage of economic slavery how can we truly talk about generational prosperity if we still harboring generational pain so when we come to Trap and Tuesdays, I need it to be your financial spiritual refill. Because I truly think that money is spiritual. I truly think that we need God in our life in order to be prosperous on any level. It's, it's why he told us to be fruitful and multiply, right? Because he said we can, be, we can be prosperous in all different areas of our life. The land of milk and honey can look a many different ways to many different people. But I need you to understand that we, gotta, we can't keep making the 11-day journey take 40 years. We can't keep making the 11 day journey take 40 years. So I need us to, tonight I need us to say that we will make peace with our financial past. And I don't want us to just say it. Like there's a thing that I like to do. Every time I, I encounter some new knowledge, some, I, every time I hear a word, that can, that can move the needle in my life, whether it be spiritually, whether it be emotionally, whether it be mentally, or whether it be financially, I always write it down because there's a connection that happens when I write it, when I speak it, when I think it, I begin to feel it. So tonight, I need everybody, I'm, I want you to write that down. I want you to take a minute and write down, I will make peace with my financial past. I want you to write it down. And then after you write that down, at some point before you go to sleep tonight, I want you to really be truthful with yourself and I want you to write down five things that has hindered your financial growth. 
See, the only way we can truly move the needle in our lives is we have the realistic conversation with ourselves. What are the philosophies? What are the ideas? What are the ideologies that hold us back? What are the things that we thought were normal but truly are a hindrance to our growth? What are the things that we need to prune like a rose so we can blossom, so we can strive, so we can rise, so we can, so we can bloom through the financial concrete? I just need to know what are the things. But most importantly, you need to know because you've been carrying around, you've been carrying around those financial scars for far too long. Today we vaccinate ourselves from those financial hardships. Today, tonight, we will do the work. We will financially heal. Tonight, we do the work. Tonight, we take the first step on the ladder. Tonight, and I know they say trap. Sometimes you be preaching to us. I'm going to be honest with y'all. I just love the idea of where we going. I know tonight I might not be talking to everybody, but I know tonight they got about five people listening like, yeah, tonight, trap. I'm going to make peace with my financial past. And sometimes you got to talk to everybody just to reach five people. Sometimes you got to talk to a whole room full of people just to make that shift in three people night. So tonight, I know they got somebody in the chat. Tonight, I know they got somebody listening on the live. Tonight, I know somebody going to make that move just off this 15 to 20 minutes. Tonight, we going to make the necessary changes. Tonight, we going to write it down. Tonight, we going to make the list. Tonight, we going to say we will make peace with our financial past. Tonight, somebody gonna have a breakthrough once we start talking about those six phases of wealth. Tonight, I know that somebody gonna make a move that's gonna shift their portfolio, that's gonna shift their bank account, that's gonna shift their credit score, that's gonna shift their savings, that's gonna shift their emergency fund. So we gonna, when I say make peace with our financial past, I ain't just talking about stocks, I'm talking about the whole plethora of financial things that we live with. Tonight, tonight we gonna make peace. 